Welcome back to the channel. Um, it's a cold, um, foggy and frosty morning, um, but I've got my coffee and I have some books to show you. Well, a book, two books actually. It's a book with a companion booklet. So you make your mind up. Anyway, let's get on with it. So what I want to show you today is this. It's called Art Fundamentals, Theory in Practice. How to critique and improve your art for better results. It's a paperback book, um, published by 3D Total. A lovely book, it's quite long. It's got about, let's see, must be nearly, yeah, nearly 300, 285 pages, I think. Um, and it talks basically about some of the fundamentals um, of art uh, theory, how to construct an image, how to think about various aspects of an image, thinking about the lighting, the colour that you use, perspective, all those sorts of things. You get to hear from some people working in the industry who are obviously very experienced and have got a lot to share and they will talk about kind of the things that they, they do in order to construct a successful piece of artwork and they will show you throughout how they um, revise and remake earlier pieces to improve them uh, into something that is a, 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 an improved final piece, if you like. So that's a great book. We'll have a look through. It also came with this pamphlet, which is thinner. Um, it's a companion book. Let's have a look at that as well afterwards. So check it out. Let's have a look. So here it is. Art Fundamentals Theory and Practice. How to critique and improve your art for better results. What's inside? So yeah, it's published in 2021, so it's pretty hot off the press. Um, and here's the contents page. So this is what we've got inside. We've got a forward uh, by this artist that you may recognise. Uh, a welcome. And then we've got some fundamentals here spread over several pages. And we'll have a look through these. We've got a critical thinking section. Um, some tutorials there that take up sort of the main bit of the book, I'd say. Uh, and then we've got a gallery, glossary, contributors, and index. So without further ado, let's start having a look through. So there's the foreword um, by Simone Grunewald. I hope I've got that right. A character and visual development artist. And they've um, published other books um, with 3D Total. Um, Here's the welcome. Bonus tips down here. As you navigate the tutorials, you will find coloured tip boxes like this one throughout, in addition to walking you in detail through their remaking process. The seasoned experts in this book use these tips to share even more advice gleaned from a career of continual learning and improvement. Don't miss them. Okay, so watch out for these uh, tip boxes. So here's the first bit uh, about fundamentals. So it's going to basically cover the essentials uh, and this is going to be broken down further into these um, sections. There's a bit about light, a bit, a bit about use of colour, how to compose images, um, uh, considerations about perspective, uh, anatomy, and then also the, the narrative, the meaning of the piece. So here's a bit about light, sort of considering, well, I mean, you can kind of see what's uh, on, on display here. It's the angle of the light, the, the strength of the light, the harshness. Um, whether it's a soft light or not, uh, and the shading and shadow. And it goes into detail about that. Then we've got a bit about colour. Obviously, that's important. That's one thing I always struggle with, to be honest. Colour, it's just uh, it's not some, it's not my strongest point when it comes to art. Um, but picking a palette that works, you know, colours that, that work together uh, and that give that helps convey a certain message. Um, so it's talks about colour harmony complementary colours and temperatures used, green versus red, cool versus warm hues, and then also they've got dark and light within that image. So it's littered throughout this book, obviously with visual examples of the concepts that they're, uh, that they're covering. Here's a bit about the colour wheel and uh, light spectrum and so on. I mean, obviously this book is too long for me to go into too much detail on every page, we'll be here all day. So I will go sort of fairly swiftly through this book. Um, here's a section there about uh, compositions. Here's one of those tips boxes that we talked about earlier. Um, so this is talking about how to structure your uh, art so that it actually works, um, so it's balanced and so on. It's also bringing in other aspects here, uh, creating dynamic squares. 
and framing key areas. Okay, okay, so now we're onto the perspectives section. So this is uh, obviously going to cover what's known as a vanishing point, i.e. where the eye is drawn to within the image, um, sort of the, the furthest point on the horizon, if you like. Um, and this is sort of talking about how objects are, you know, obviously nearer to you will have a different perspective to those further away. Other perspectives, introducing four or more vanishing points takes us into the realm of curvilinear perspective, which replicates the effect of straight light rays falling on the curved surface of the retina. It's all very technical. The resulting scene has what is often referred to as a fisheye effect, right? Curving away in multiple directions. And it's strange when you see that taken to extremes, isn't it? Okay, so let's move on. Anatomy, well, we all know what that means. You know, the, the human body, the form, getting the um, sort of getting that right, getting the proportions correct. It's talking about how to simplify anatomy into basic shapes. I've often seen that uh, done because it's quite a daunting task, isn't it? Drawing the human body, um, so breaking it down into smaller structures. It's often a good way to begin. This is talking about the narrative. So, what is this actual piece of art? What's the message? What's the meaning? What, the, what is the artist trying to get you to think about? What's the message they're trying to get across to you? Um, and obviously there's lots of text there, which I'm not going to read it all. Mysterious framing above. So the low framing and shadowy architecture help create unease. Yes, you feel uneasy when you see this. This character's turned away from the viewer with empty space behind him, feeling vulnerable perhaps. It does create an element of mystery when you look at that. What's this one doing here? Welcoming composition. The viewer can easily visualise the character's path through the scene. Yes, this woman's going to walk down here and she's going to go around there. Nothing too mysterious about that, except what's around the corner, perhaps. The light and space in front of the character feels open and welcoming. Yes, it's true. OK, other scenes, other dynamics going on here. Now onto the critical thinking part. Developing your critical eye. So being able to... Look at what you've done and think about how you could improve it. Uh, how to improve your critical eye. And this is important, you know, if you want to become better as an artist, that you can um, evaluate your own work as you go and seek to make improvements and adjustments. Uh, accepting and offering critiques, that's often quite hard, isn't it, to accept critiques. Not view it purely as criticism, but actually as something constructive. So I like this piece of art, I don't know what it is. Getting stuck. How to move on when you feel like you're stuck. And importantly, and, and also related to that, how to stay motivated. It is hard, isn't it, sometimes? Um, you know, you get a new blank piece of paper and you want to do something new, but what do you do? How do you think of something new to do? How do you motivate yourself to do it in the first place? Carve out the time and actually see it through to the end. So now here's this tutorial section. Okay, you can see there's various tutorials by various artists. What does it say? Every artist applies their knowledge of the fundamentals differently, constructing images and solving problems according to their own personal specialisms and interests. In these step-by-step -step tutorials, you will see how nine different artists apply art theory and critical thinking to the process of remaking an older image, resulting in a before and after snapshot of how much they have grown and improved over time. Excuse me, quick coffee slurp. So what's interesting about this is you actually see the artists sort of before and after, as it were, and what they did to reach uh, the conclusion, what they, what they, what they changed. Um, so again, this is a long book and I'm uh, waffling slightly. So I'm going to just start turning the pages and talking a little bit less. But you'll be able to see from these tutorials, um, hopefully a good visual representation of the artist's uh, journey. Let the story do the work for you. Yeah, this is talking about having different sized objects for uh, sort of variety, keeping something interesting to the eye. Okay, there's a final image in this case. Very different style here, star capture, cartoony style. Some stuff about the composition. Uh, we've seen this before, haven't we? Keep going. That was the final image. And there's another one, the Journey of Hearts. This one's called. I like seeing these kinds of sketches, different considerations for the layout and the composition. 
this particular case. Okay, so I'm exploring some different source material. There we go. It's a really nice book, I have to say. It's lovely, uh, lovely paper. It's lovely to look through. Very, very colourful. Beautifully printed and produced. Um, here's another the wrestler. So this is the kind of the, the, the main one from the front cover, I guess, that catches your eye. Um, and as you can see, we are now treated to this particular artist's journey whilst reimagining this particular piece of work. Pink ears, and there's the final image. The eyeless dragons. Interesting. Yeah, so here's the original one, and for, for example, here they're talking about the lack of technical expertise, inaccurate anatomy here, just not really as good as it could be, not realistic enough. Composition and world design could be improved, and so they set about fixing these issues, finding the characters, and so on. And they, hmm, so extreme perspective. But yes, let's get through. It's really, it's, it's good that each of these tutorials does go into a lot of background. You know, each of them lasts several pages. You get a lot of information on each one. Here's another one. Sorry, I'm going to skip through. Again, you get a sense of the uh, of what's happening. Hopefully, I like the scale here of this huge whale under that boat. It's got a nice kind of flow. Got the curved lines. Uh, it's a bit anime. Pretty scary though. I wouldn't want to be in that boat. A huge whale. It could just come up and tip you over. But it's a beautiful image. The mystery in the forest. Look at this. Perspective. Uh, re rethinking the composition for this piece here. And uh, the lighting. Nice of colours. Yeah, again, going into great depth. Lots of trade secrets being shared there. The spider's cave. I think, is this the last one? I don't know. Wow, look at that big spider. Not not a good tutorial for the arachnophobes out there. It's a bit of that she lob. Um, just jumping through. So that's the original. Here's a new image. They've actually really worked on the colours, haven't they? And they've diminished the colour palette, really. But it works much better. Yeah, thought more about the lighting as well. The depth. Okay, so now there's just a gallery here for the last few pages of the book. Um, before and after images of six professional artists with a range of styles and specialisms. See how they tackle the remaking process and how they have benefited from months of, and or years of study, practice and reflection. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. I'm going to have to just pause for a coffee slurp here because it's going cold. Little Hobbit Hole, or something similar. The Dream World. So in some cases, I have to say, I don't always agree that the final image is, is, is improved. In this case, I kind of like the flatness of this. There's a little bit too much. They've brought more sort of shading and, and there's blurriness. I kind of like this flat style, personally. It's just a personal choice. But in most cases, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an improvement. And I can relate to that. This is good as well. What's going on? Cabin in the swamp. That's nice. Looks like some video game concept work. Perhaps it is. Safe haven in a dangerous landscape, absolutely. Armed, pointing a gun out into this dark forest with just one light. So here's a glossary, some of the key terms explained. I mean, you probably, uh, probably know those, but if you don't, you can look them up. Here are the contributors list. Quite a lot of people contributed to this. There's that nice picture with the whale again. Probably my favourite, that one. An index. And some sort of little adverts there from the publisher. So there we go. So I also said we'd have a quick look at this companion booklet that came with the book. It's a 3D Total Shop exclusive bonus image gallery. You have know, a quick flick through this, so it's not many pages sort of 20 something, 24. But these are nice. 
almost feel like you could frame these if you wanted. Some of them are full page. Nice. Oh, that's really good. This underwater scene means a lot to me. It was fairly different from my usual images, but got a great reception, especially from the Sea of Thieves gaming community, Sea of Thieves being a console game. I was happy with how I managed to keep it loose while still maintaining a strong atmosphere, yeah. Good. Very Pirates of the Caribbean. These are nice. Another one of these from above shots, always like those. This is some sort of post-apocalyptic scene. As they say, the last man in Berlin. Uh, one of a series of paintings taking place in an overgrown post-apocalyptic setting. Yeah. So yeah, it's a nice little uh, addition to the book. I like that. So I'll have to keep those together on the bookcase so they don't become separated. Very good. So there we go, the Art Fundamentals book and the companion booklet, we've had a look through those. Just another good book from 3D Total, I would say. And if you're studying art, um, definitely something to pick up and look through. It's a great uh, book to have uh, for inspiration, I would say. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.